Hey there, it's Jason from Codemanship with a video about recommended further reading for people who want to learn more about Codecraft. So in this video, I'm going to be recommending eight books for people who are serious about becoming real code crafters, starting with Test Driven Development by Example by Kent Beck. So Kent, who you may know as kind of the, um, the person we most closely associate with Test Driven Development, he repopularized it in the 90s as part of the whole extreme programming movement. Um, and as you would imagine from Kent, you, this is a really, really good introduction to TDD. One of the best, I think. So this is a book that I highly recommend, particularly if you want to learn the kind of classic style of TDD, where the focus is on discovering a design um, through refactoring code after passing each test. So emergent design. Um, so a really, really good book. Definitely a good place to start on TDD. Now, the second book I'm going to recommend is called Growing Object Oriented Software Guided by Tests by Steve Freeman and Nat Price. Uh, this is also another TDD book, um, but it's coming at it from a, a slightly different angle. So their emphasis is more on test driving the interaction or the design of interactions between objects in our software. So it's got a more kind of a message oriented focus, a more, um, some might say a more truly OO kind of focus to it. <clears throat> and I find that um, having practiced TDD for, for, you know, a couple of decades now, you need a bit of both. There are times when it's really about high-level design and the interactions between objects and designing of interfaces. Um, but there's also a lot of discovery of design, particularly through refactoring after passing each test. Um, and this book is a, is a really great introduction to that, working through a proper kind of enterprise quality sort of example. So there's no fizz buzzes here. It's good stuff. Okay, now, the refactoring book is a book I think every software developer should own. Whether you're into agile software development or TDD or not, um, the ability to safely um, make code easier to change um, is worth its weight in gold. It's probably the second most important skill for a software developer, the first one, of course, being communication. Um, this book has recently been refreshed and updated. It's in its second edition, so there's more here for functional programmers, for example. But the same core ideas are as timelessly applicable today in 2020 as, as they were in the late 90s when this book first came out. So really good stuff from Martin Fowler and others there. Okay, working effectively with legacy code, following on from the refactoring book. So most software developers are working on legacy code most of the time. So it is rather odd that there is only one book on the subject, but it's lucky for us that happens to be a really good book. So this book by Michael Feathers introduces us to the disciplines and the ideas that we need to apply in order to be able to safely change legacy code um, and add unit tests and all the other stuff we want to do to legacy code to make it easier and safer to change so that over time, one change at a time, the, the code, legacy code that is expensive and risky to change can, becomes rehabilitated, if you like. So a really good book crammed full of great ideas. Now, specification by example, if you're interested in working with customers and if you want to make money as a software developer, you should be, then the question of how do we reach a, an explicit shared understanding of exactly what it is the software is going to do with our customers, and that's what this book is all about. I think it's the best introduction to these ideas of using tests as specifications and as a tool for communication, not just between developers and their customers, but between developers and testers and between um, developers and UX people and basically bringing everyone to the exact same page facing the right way as we develop and deliver our software. So uh, Goiko Agic has written other books on this topic, um, but I think this is the one that you should start with. It's the best introduction to specification by example. Okay, the X-Unit Test Patterns book. So we're, we're going off piste a little bit here, but what tends to happen when we talk about particularly maintainability of code and design principles is that people forget that their test code is also code and also needs to be maintainable. So here's a great book by Gerard Mezzaro. Have I pronounced that correctly, Gerard? We've not met, so I don't know. Um, I apologize if I have pronounced it incorrectly. Um, but this is a book basically full of, full of design patterns, um, architectural ideas for the, the design of our code, um, to our test code, to make sure that our test code is maintainable. So how do we... Um, refactored, duplicated assertions, duplicated setups, and all that wonderful stuff. So it's crammed full of really practical stuff that's very, very useful to know. 
Um, and a lot of this has never, uh, never really occurred to developers before that test code should have an architecture, but it absolutely should. As you grow from a few tests, dozens of tests to hundreds of tests to thousands of tests, the architecture of test code becomes very, very critical. Okay, continuous delivery. Now I'm gonna make a bold claim here. This book by Jez Humble and Dave Farley, I think at the moment is the most important book in software development. And that's because, I know it's a bold claim, but that's because all of these code craft ideas and all these techniques, they're all leading to our ability to efficiently and quickly deliver working software and very importantly, to keep delivering it as often, as frequently, or whenever the customer requires. That means that the code must always be shippable and that delivery process must be as frictionless as possible. And all the code craft practices, all those agile technical practices like version control and unit testing and test-driven development and refactoring and continuous integration, they're all pointing in that direction. That's what they're all for. And therefore, I believe that continuous delivery is what it's all about. You can take all of your requirements disciplines until our code meets the real world. It's all guesswork. And believe me, I've been there. I grew, grew up as a software developer in the 90s and wore the pointy hat of an architect um, and a business analyst and a requirements analyst and um, discovered that ultimately the, the best way to find out what the customer really needs is to deliver something and then get to try again and then try again and then try again and try again. And that's how we really get there. So while we tend to think of these things as being about building it right, in my opinion, code craft, and particularly continuous delivery, is all about figuring out what was the right thing to build. And the best way to do that is to put working software in the hands of end users as many times as we need to, to get it to where they need it to be. So really, really important book. Great book as well. Um, and I highly recommend it. Now, the final book I'm going to recommend bit of self-promotion here um, but the, you, they'll see there is a an altruistic reason for this as well um, is my own so the the TDD course book so this book is called TDD and it's named after what was originally called the test-driven development codemanship workshop a three-day workshop but in reality it's so crammed full of all of these ideas about unit testing and version control and continuous integration and you know, advanced topics like mutation testing and property-based testing and continuous ins inspection. But now the course is called Codecraft. Um, but the book is st still called TDD at the moment. I'm in the process of um, refactoring the book to match the course, but that's it in hard copy version. The only way to get a hard copy, I'm afraid, is to come on a Codemanship course. But you lucky people, there is an electronic copy freely available. If we take a look on the Codemanship website, you'll see if you click on the link for the Codecraft course homepage, there we go. If you scroll down, you'll see there's a link there to a PDF copy of the book in glorious Technicolor. Um, everything that's in this book is in the PDF copy. I've, le I've left nothing out. Um, and this is the same stuff that's in all of the Codecraft videos that I've been recording. So... For Java now, I've completed the set. That's 18 videos and over eight hours of material, practical demonstrations of all the ideas that are in the book. The book covers everything, and it's a whistle-stop tour. It's practical and hands-on, so it's full of, full of examples and code and exercises as well, very importantly, because you can't just learn this stuff by reading. You've got to try it. Um, so it's full of every, all these ideas, basically, um, covered in a practical way, and the videos go into a bit more depth for some of them and uh, I think there's over eight hours of videos for Java now and I'm going to be working on completing the set for JavaScript and C Sharp and Python over the summer. So there you are, a bunch of great resources to begin your journey learning about Codecraft. I recommend starting with this book. Um, I would really recommend obviously coming on a Codemanship course, so twist the boss's arm See if you can get her to, to, to pay for me to come in and give you hands-on training. It, it's always much better when, uh, when there's someone there with a lot of experience, um, who, and in this case, someone who's actually written the book as well, um, does help. Um, but if you can't get on a co-manship course, um, you read the book, take a look at the videos. There's oodles and oodles of stuff now. Um, and that's the start of your journey. I would go on from there now to, to then start reading and trying out the ideas in these great books.